Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com. Let's start with the sub D cylinder command. You can see the options up in the command line for how many faces in both directions. We're going to be modeling a mug here. I'll go into shaded mode and I'll delete those top faces. Then I'll take the sub D and use offset sub D to make a thickness of it. I'll flip the direction inward. On the top we have two creased edges. We can use remove crease to make those softer. Then with a face loop selection we can extrude up with the gumball to change the look of the lip of the mug. The proximity of the edge loop below that edge will control how soft it is as shown here in box mode and then smooth mode. On the bottom sub objects select those four faces mouse over this two axis handle on the gumball and hold down the shift key before you click and drag. This will scale in two dimensions. Then also hold the control key or the command key on Mac to make new geometry while you're scaling in 2D. Then with no keys held down I'll use the extrude handle on the gumball Z axis to create a depression on the bottom of the mug. This workflow takes practice, so do it a few times, making sure to hold down the shift key before clicking and dragging on that two axis handle. Then hold the control or command on Mac key in addition to create new geometry at the same time. Now you can see that the interior is actually poking through the bottom. So from the top, I'll sub objects select those four faces. I'll go into ghosted mode so that we can see what the shape of the interior of the mug looks like now. You can see that we have a little bit of an undercut, so I'll take this edge loop and drag it down, but I'll also need to scale these four faces inward, again with a 2D scale using the gumball. You can move this edge up and down to change the look of the interior, or you could use insert edge if you wanted to make it sharper. Now if I zoom in here, you can see that the center four faces are not actually flat. You see that little blue box? That's the scale handle for the z-axis. You can drag it up and it'll snap to the center of the gumball. Now I know all of that is flat. This is super useful to do in box mode for the sub-D. For the handle, we'll get an edge loop selection and we'll use the command bevel. Bevel has a number of segments. We'll keep it at the three segment default. And then I'll sub object select some faces and extrude them out twice. This gives us new faces that we can then use the bridge command with. Now I'll use sub object selection with windows. So if I drag a window from right to left, anything that passes within the window gets selected, but if it is from left to right then the entire selection has to be within the window. Now the corners of the handle are too sharp, so let's round those off. Subobject select and delete. Then pre-select using subobject selection, two edges, and run the stitch command. We'll do the same thing on the bottom. Delete pre-select two sub-object edges, and stitch. I'll drag the mug off to the side now, and we'll use a copy. So I held the Alt key down when dragging. You can also tap the Alt key, and that will make a copy. You'll see a little plus symbol. I'll go into shaded mode in an orthographic view so that I can sub-object select those faces. Then back in perspective, I'll drag them up using the gumball. We've changed the interior shape, so let's drag down that edge loop and let's go into ghosted mode so that we can see the actual change to that interior wall. Now this is the creamer and it's a little too big, so let's use the scale command. 
from zero and just by eye scale it down until it feels right. The last little bit, we'll go back into shaded mode, will be the spout. And we'll get three edges there and simply drag them over with the gumball. And those are the basics of push and pull sub D modeling in Rhino 7. Thanks for watching.